Hi, this is Dr. Subhatra. In today's class, I am going to teach about the geometric design of railway track. The following parameters uh, determine the geometric design of a railway track. It is gradient, curvature and alignment of the track. The objectives of uh, geometric design are to have a safe and smooth running of the train, to obtain the maximum speed, to carry the heavy axial load, uh, to have a good aesthetic view and uh, to have the lesser maintenance of the track and to prevent the train from derailment. The geometric design has to be done. Among them, Gradient is a very important parameter. Gradient is the raise or fall in the level of the railway track is called as a gradient. There are many types of gradients available. The main aim of providing the gradients are uh, to reach the various stations at different elevations, uh, to minimize the cost of earthwork, uh, to follow the ground contours as much as possible. This is the main objective or the aim of uh, providing gradient. This is the type of gradient. This one. This is the type of gradient. Here the train has to move uh, or raise upwards. Here the gradient value is given as 10%. This is also a raising gradient. Here it is uh, around the maximum gradient is around only 4%. So these are the examples of uh, uh, raising gradient. So coming to the types of uh, gradients, uh, there are four types in major. Ruling gradient, momentum gradient, pusher or helper gradient, gradients in station yards. We will see one by one in detail. Ruling gradient, this is the steepest gradient that exists in a section. It determines the maximum load that can be hauled by a locomotive with the maximum permissible speed. The extra pull required by the locomotive. We can calculate it using this uh, triangle. See in this triangle this AC is the gradient which is provided. When the train is the train this uh, box is a train. When it is moving upwards the weight of the self weight of the train is uh, moving downwards. This is shown in the downward arrow mark. So that we can form a triangle ABC. It makes an angle theta here. To calculate how much extra pull is required for the train to raise the height. We can calculate it using sin theta. Sin theta we know that it is opposite side by hypotenuse. That is BC by the hypotenuse side is AC. BC, what is that BC? This is the self weight of the train W divided by what is that pull required? That is P. So sin theta is equal to W by P. Okay, so that we can calculate P as W into sin theta. In plane, in plane terrain, usually um, we'll give the ruling gradient as 1 and 50, one, sorry, 1 and 150 or uh, 1 and 250. In hilly terrain, we'll give the ruling gradient value as uh, 1 and 10 to uh, 1 and 150. See, this is uh, shown here in plane how much it is in hilly region how much we'll be providing I have shown here then coming to the momentum gradient momentum gradients are very steeper than the ruling gradient and this is overcome by means of uh, the momentum which is gathered while having a run in plane or on a falling gradient in the valley. This is uh, shown in the figure. See here, the gradient is very steeper when compared to the ruling gradient. But the train moves on its own uh, by means of gathering the momentum. The 
this uh, gradient it is able to overcome by gathering all the momentum but at this junction we should not provide any signals that is no obstacle should be there at that junction of uh, momentum gradient okay this momentum gives the additional kinetic energy to the moving train which would enable the train to overcome a steeper rising gradient this is the picture shows the momentum gradient by means of that momentum uh, here during cycling also he can uh, go steeper and then he can raise to a certain height by means of the momentum whatever he has gained this is the same principle is applicable here also then next coming to the pusher or helper gradient the rate of rise in hilly region will become very important when trying to reduce the length of the railway line and therefore the gradients steeper than the ruling gradients are provided to reduce the overall cost here okay it uh, in some situations it needs uh, one more additional locomotive to uh, give that pull of the load so it needs extra engine or extra energy to pull the uh, vehicle so that's why it is called as a pusher or helper gradient then coming to gradient at uh, station yards uh, these are very flatter usually provided in the usually provided in the stations uh, it prevents the standing vehicle from rolling and moving away from the yard due to the combined effect of gravity and strong winds it just prevents the vehicle from moving away this is called as a gradient at the station yard uh, on the ne in the next class we'll be seeing about the grade compensation and super elevation what are the other geometric uh, elements which are to be designed thank you